Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Lisa Kopp, and I work with um, Hope Healthcare Services, the PACE program. And I'm not sure if any of you know anything about PACE, but I just want to give you just a little bit of history. So first of all, PACE stands for Program of All-Inclusive Care for the Elderly. And it's actually been around since the 70s. And it actually was started by an Asian community in California who did not want to see their loved ones go into an assisted or a nursing home. So they kind of started this concept. And here we are now in 2021, and we probably have about 150 PACE programs up and running throughout the country. So just some of the basics about PACE is it is an optional benefit under your Medicare and Medicaid uh, for comprehensive medical and social services. So and in other words, PACE programs are only funded by Medicare and Medicaid. So we don't get any funding from private insurances like United Healthcare, Humana, et cetera. Most of the people that we are um, providing care to continue to live in their own homes. That's our goal, is to keep our folks in their homes. Um, we utilize an interdisciplinary team that assesses their needs, develops their care plans, and delivers all the services. We utilize Hope Pace Care Centers where we offer meals, socialization, and that is where most of them get their medical care because in our Pace Centers is, um, is where their primary care provider is located. And I'm gonna get into a little bit of that as we go through. And then um, it's a supportive program that serves the entire family because we're taking care of somebody that's in Pace. So we're providing medical, care and, and support to the participant, but we're also providing that support to the caregiver as well. So PACE benefits consumers. So it, it meets their individualized care needs. It gives them that option so that they can continue living in the community as long as possible. That's our goal. And I always tell people it is the one-stop shop for all of their health care and social service needs. And then the, um, the participants, if for whatever reason they don't feel that PACE is meeting their needs, they can disenroll, and then we'll just put them back on traditional Medicare, and they still have the Medicaid. So eligibility. Everybody asks me about eligibility. So we started age 55. We, we provide PACE in Collier, Lee, and Charlotte counties. We actually have five PACE centers. We have almost 500 people in this program. I'm very proud to say that number. We're, we're, we're almost at 500. The big thing is you have to be a full-time resident in the county where this program's offered. That is very advantageous to the people that live in Florida. And then you have to be certified by the state to be meeting the needs for nursing home level of care. I really don't like that the need for nursing home level of care because a lot of people will call me and say, well, my mother's not bed bound, you know, and that's typically the, the, some of the clientele that goes in a nursing home. So basically what I will tell people when, when we're trying to see if we can qualify them is if they have medical issues that down the road you might need to go into an assisted living or you might need to go into a nursing home. So we want to capture these people in the early stages of their diseases so that we can try to help keep them at home and avoid going into placement. And then last but most importantly is that we have to be able to live safely in the community. So what does that mean? That means that if I have somebody who has Alzheimer's and they live alone, um, and the neighbor, the neighbor is the one that calls, because this happens, and the neighbor would say to me, well, Lisa, she's, she's knocking on people's doors. Um, she almost started a fire. That is not living safely in the community. That's really somebody that needs more of an assisted or a long-term care placement. Who participates? So typical PACE participants is similar to um, a nursing home resident. Now, we have the average age of 80, and you know what? I wish we would have changed the slide because I looked at it yesterday in the office. Our, our average age group is actually starts at around 70 to 80. That's predominantly the age group that we have, okay? And we do have a lot of people that do have um, Alzheimer's or dementia. Now, they talk about the three activities of daily living, so, so having some deficits with being able to do those things. So what are we talking about activities of daily living? Do you guys know what activities of daily living are? Okay. So, so basically, I will ask questions like, can you take a shower on your own? 
Are you able to um, do your housekeeping? Are you able to get your groceries? Things like that. Well, unfortunately, a lot of people I deal with are not driving. You know, they might be on walkers and things like that. So it's more challenging. So when I hear those, those indicators, that's actually somebody that might qualify to get into this program. And then 90% um, uh, continue to live in the community. We already saw that one. Uh, services and benefits. So we use an interdisciplinary care team that determines along with the participant and the family. So I don't want people thinking that, oh, we're a managed care program and they're gonna take control and, and I have to do what they say. No, we all work together to, 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 to provide the services and care that best fits that individual needs. And then every six months, we do reassess, um, we reassess their care. Do we need to, to provide more services? So every six months, all of our team members are doing reassessments on the folks that we serve in this program. And then we are responsible for um, authorizing and providing services. So basically, we operate kind of like an HMO. So we normally, when we, when we are talking with families, we let them know we are the only phone number you're gonna call for whatever you need medically. And, and as I go through the slides, you're gonna see some of the detailed services that we provide. But, but the, it's kind of interesting because even some of my memory impaired people, I always say, if you don't wanna pay for it, you're gonna call us. They remember that. They don't forget that. Um, we also help people avoid costly and prevent them from going into facilities and hospitals. So I'm gonna tell you this little story because I think this is a good example of this. We have a female up here in Charlotte County that's in Pace. We are available 24 seven by phone. We're physically in the centers Monday through Friday. She called our triage nurse on a Saturday morning and told the triage nurse that she's, her body's burning up. So that nurse was like, oh, I think we need to get the nurse that's available to go out and see people to go see her. We send Beverly over to see her. Right away, Beverly says, Ina, I need a urine sample. She had a UTI. So Beverly was able to determine she had a urinary tract infection. She called our doctor, got the medicine, went to Walgreens, and brought it back to her on a Saturday. Who does that? If Ina was not in this program, she would have been in the hospital. She might have ended up in rehab. I mean, I used to work in a rehab, and I used to get a lot of admissions um, from people that had UTIs. And I'm sure you guys are aware that it, it affects people you know, in various ways. So I thought that's a very good example to tell people about how we can keep them out of the hospital. Now, here we get into some more detail about the services and benefits. So in all of our PACE centers is where most of their team members are. So we start out with the providers. So one of the things you have to be comfortable knowing is you do have to give up your community doctor we have our own providers that are stationed in the PACE centers. Uh, PACE here in Port Charlotte's in the Promenade Center on the backside of Winn-Dixie, in case you guys are wondering where we are. So we have a provider there that is a specialist in geriatrics. So when I talk to families and they tell me that they go to six different doctors in the community, I will tell them, you may not need to see all those doctors. We try to provide as much of the medical services in that center. So a good example is um, a lot of my Alzheimer's folks, okay? A lot of them will tell me, I gotta take mom to the neurologist every three months. So I'll say, what are they doing? Well, I don't know, they just say she's gotta come every three months. And I will tell them, she's not gonna go to the neurologist every three months. Unless they're trying to tweak a medication or there's something that they're, they think is going on we will manage that Alzheimer's individual right in the PACE Center with our provider. We have registered nurses in the center. We um, provide home health care in the home. However, in the center, we also do have certified nursing assistants because one of the things that we do provide is an adult daycare program that's attached to PACE. So, so everyone is assigned a certain day of the week that we would have them come to us the buses go out and pick them up. I know you guys have seen those Hope Butterfly buses driving around. That's us. So, so a good example is to say, all right, my mom's in Pace, and she goes to the Pace Center every Monday. When she goes in, if she's due for anything annually with the provider, it's going to be done while she's there. I didn't have to leave work and take it to the doctor. 
Um, she has the opportunity to, to see the nurses if the nurses are monitoring her for anything. And then in the center, in the day area, we have certified nursing assistants and home health aides that work with our folks as well because some of them do need assistance in the bathrooms and things like that. We also have, I'm gonna kind of jump down a little bit because I wanna give you an idea of who's in the, in the center. So it's the doctors, nurse practitioners, registered nurses, CNAs. We also have a full-time physical therapist that provides PT for anyone that needs physical therapy. We also have a wellness trainer who works in conjunction with physical therapy and what she may do is um, just help um, with low impact exercises, working one on one with individuals. Then we have dietary, because we serve meals. We do a continental breakfast, we do a hot lunch. We have two dietitians. They are also available to educate the family, educate the, the participant, you know, like if they're a diabetic, they wanna try to, you know, go on a diabetic diet, things like that. We have um, a social worker that's assigned to everybody, rec therapy, and occupational therapy. So, so basically what I tell everybody is if you're gonna join this program, you're gonna get a family. Because we all, we all work together with you and I always say we're just an extension of your family. But those are the, the team players that are in our centers. And then we go into the home health care. So we provide home health aid services in the homes. However, we do not do I need someone to sit with my mom five days a week while I work eight hours a day. That's not what we do. We will give her a center day, so you get, you know, you have a respite day. The home health aid services that we provide through PACE consist of personal care, housekeeping, and taking them to do their errands, okay? Um, we also will set them up with any specialist. So, I know they put up here dentistry, otometry, and podiatry. Well, we do all the other ones too. So basically, we, we have a network of specialists that we can use in the community. And the nice thing is, is that we make all those outside appointments for all of our people. And guess what? We take them to those appointments. And they're not gonna ask you for a dime when you go in. We get the bill, okay? And I'll talk a little bit about the financing as we get near the end of this. Um, we do provide, um, what well, talks about social services, personal care, the meals, that's all done in the, in the um, pay centers. We provide all their prescriptions. Every 28 days, we send meds to the homes prepackaged. So that helps me with some of my folks that, and I've seen this happen, you drop your pill box, right? You got all these pills all over the floor, they all look alike. You know, oh, I got two, two blue, three pink, and you don't know what, which, which day they go in. So we, we like people to tell us they want their medications in pill pouches. So they'll get a box delivered every 28 days, you pull it out, tells you what time to take it, what's in it, you're done, okay? And then for my diabetics, we do provide all of their diabetic supplies and all that good stuff as well. And then transportation's covered. <laughs> but this is actually an old bus. We just got 30 new buses and vans. So we, we are a lot more colorful these days. So up in Port Charlotte, you might see a purple bus, green, red, orange, red, white, and blue. We have, we have about 30 of them. And we kind of, we, we switch them out between the counties. So how do we get paid, right? Because we do all this great stuff. We only get, we get capitated funding monthly through Medicare and Medicaid. So regardless of whether somebody went in the hospital, which I'm sorry, I didn't include that. We cover hospitalizations as well. So if somebody ends up needing a surgery, then they gotta go to the hospital, and then let's say it's someone with a hip fracture, and we know that individual can't go home. We will put them in a rehab. We're not gonna go back and say, now you gotta give me $5,000 more. That we get capitated funding, which means the same amount of money every month to take care of the individuals in our program. So they, they, it's a set payment. Um, additional resources. This is really important because I know a lot of people know people that live out throughout our country, right? So if you go on the National PACE Association, you can find out where every PACE program is throughout our country. And then this is just another um, website that um, we just give you information on. Um, I haven't even been on that, paceforyou.org. Now, that's my contact information. 
But what I wanted to kind of just share a little bit about is as far as like the, pay, the, the payer source for us. So Medicare and Medicaid are the only two sources that pay us. We do not take anybody's income. You keep all of your income, you will have no out-of-pocket costs whatsoever as long as you call us directly for whatever it is you, would, you feel you need. I mean, we normally will suggest and recommend things to our participants, but you know what? The caregivers have, you can call and say, hey, I think maybe my mother needs a wheelchair or a walker because we also provide medical equipment. So we don't necessarily want people to wait until we suggest something. If there's something you feel your loved one needs, we want you to call and put it in as a request. The team will collaborate. If we say that they need it, then it, we take care of it, we pay for it, and we'll set up that doctor's appointment or whatever it is that, it, you know, that we're saying we're agreeing that they can, they can have. When we bring these people in this program, we're here to age them in place, right? So, so we start out with one center day. When we start seeing the changes, we start increasing the services. The center is where we keep our eyes on everybody. We do not go to the home seven days a week. When you guys live with your loved one, you're not gonna notice the subtle changes. That's part of the reasons why we want them in the center once a week. We will, the bus drivers pick up on it right away. So the nice thing is, is if, you were, if you were to come in for your center day and the bus driver says, you know, Mary don't look good, she'll go into the clinic that day and see the provider, okay? So, so if they're starting to see some medical changes, we're gonna recommend, hey, let's increase your center day. We might increase some of the home health eight hours as well if necessary. But ultimately, we don't wanna have to look at placing these folks. We want them to be able to age in place. So we, when we sign them into PACE, we pretty much would like to see them stay with us for the rest of their lives, you know, if, if we can do that, and, and try to give them a really good quality of life. Um, but it's a great support system for the caregivers, and the one thing that I think is really neat is, I mentioned you have to live here, right? We all know how hard it is to go to the doctor in season. I never even see my doctor in season, right? Our providers only take care of our PACE folks. So if Mary was in my center yesterday and her caregiver called last night and said she wasn't feeling well, my bus might be going out there to, today to go pick her up and bring her in to see the provider. So they get in to see the provider for sick visits and we have some of the common medications we get prescribed when we get sick in the center. So you could actually come into the center, get seen by the provider. Oh, you know what, you need, a, you need an antibiotic. The nurses, we have a medication dispenser, they punch it in, drops the meds, home you go, you're done. It's, you're, you, you don't have to worry about waiting, going to Walgreens. And, and obviously, if you don't feel well later in the evening, then you have that opportunity to call our after hours line um, because we are available by phone 24 seven. So we don't, want it, we don't want them running to the hospital unless it's a true life or death situation because we are trying to avoid the hospitalizations as well. And you know, we all know when you go in the ER, you're, you're exposing yourself to a lot of the other things and the, the, the gunk that goes on in the hospital. So, so that is our, that's PACE. Um, I'm trying to be conscious of the time. Am I doing okay? I got five minutes? Okay. Um, if anybody has questions, I mean, you know, I'm more than welcome to answer them. Yes. Okay. No, and you know, you, if it's funny you ask me that, she's asking me if we have a pace in Sarasota County. But I, you've got somebody up there. I give this guy a lot of credit. He was on me for about six months, pushing me to try to go to my corporate office and, and was trying to see if we could open one up there. Um, yeah, I, 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 I hear there's a need. But not any nonprofits usually open up the PACE program. Another health organization can, can open it up if they wanted to do it. It does take a lot of work and it takes a lot of money. Because you know, you gotta realize when you're dealing with capitated funding, right? You're, you're teeter-tottering with the dollars. So that's the reason why PAYS programs try to provide a lot of the medical care in their centers so that we can avoid a lot of the, 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 the costs. And it also, duplication of services. That's the other thing too. Yes. We do not have a waiting list. You're the third person that asked me that. So let me walk you through the process of, the, of, of, of 
getting connected with us. So I am the enrollment coordinator. I do all of the intakes. I enroll everybody in three counties and five centers. So if you call, you will initially go through a pre-screen. If my pre-screener feels you are a good candidate, then she's gonna give me your information and I'm gonna call you. I'll talk to you a little bit on the phone. You know, I wanna make sure that, I, that we can help you. Then I come out and do a home visit first. That's the first start to start the process. When I'm doing that home visit, one of the things I want to establish is that we're going to be able to get you on Medicaid, right? Because I told you all we were funded by Medicare and Medicaid. We do the Medicaid apps as well, if it's a clean app, which means like, you know, Mary Bursky was here earlier, an elder attorney. If you are under the, the asset limit, the liquid assets and your monthly income, then I work with somebody in my office who does all the Medicaid. After I get that information done, then I will come out, uh, well, we've got COVID. So normally I bring you to the center to do the nursing assessment, but I've been doing them over at Zoom because of COVID. However, we just reopened the centers and I can bring, if you were vaccinated, then I might be able to get your nursing assessment done in the center. Then I gotta get your medical records. That's usually holding me up, trying to get people's records. I have to go into a meeting with my medical director and some of the other team members every week, and she skews your records. We have to make sure we can medically manage people. Once my team says, yes, Mary's a good candidate, then we will send your paperwork to the Department of Elder Affairs. They will come out and they will certify you for my program. When that's done, that's when we wanna get the Medicaid up and going. We only enroll people on the first of the month in this program. So we're not just, you know, I'm enrolling people every day. The first of the month is when you would officially start, okay? Any other questions? Okay. <laughs> There's always one in the crowd. Okay, so assisted, li she's asking me about assisted living. Okay, so I'm standing here and telling you all that we're here and we work with people that live in their homes, okay? However, we do work with some people that are in, ass in assisted livings, as well as if we get to a point where we've exhausted everything we can do to keep you in your home, we have some in-network assisted livings here in Charlotte that we work with. Does PACE pay part of the room in the board? If we place you after we've exhausted services, we pay a portion. You still will have out of pocket. If you're already in the assisted living and you come to me and if I can get you in, you still would be responsible to pay your assisted living fee, but we would provide all your medical care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, in, actu in actuality, I think, I always tell my boss, why don't we open up an assisted living? Because we'd be able to keep them all forever, right? Because we're providing all their care. That we're not gonna have to, you know, hopefully we wouldn't have to move them into long term is what I'm saying. Yeah. One minute. Hi. Oh, okay, so I didn't know if any of you guys, um, he's asking about the Medicaid. So you were asking about the guidelines? Medicare, Medicare will only fund a portion of only, so, so Medicare, all right, let me rephrase this. If you only have Medicare and I can't get you on Medicaid, you will pay us roughly $3,800 a month to be in this program. But I know you're all, I know, but listen, what's it cost you to go into an assisted living? So, so you know, I love my assisted livings, but when, when people say that to me, I'm gonna say, well, listen, you're gonna probably pay four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000, and you're, you're not in your own home anymore, okay? Um, now, the other thing I didn't tell you is if you only have Medicaid, like 55 to 64 year olds who don't qualify for Medicare yet, and if I can get you in pace, Medicaid pays 100%. That's advantageous for Medicaid recipients because they can go to specialists and all that good stuff through us. She's cutting me off. <laughs> I'll hang out. 